What's good and welcome back to another video. My name is Anas, I'm a fourth year medical student and I study in London. And in today's video, I thought, let me do a quick Q&A session about being a medical student and being in medical school because I've received a lot of questions by you guys. And although I've answered them directly, um, they do cover a lot of bases. So I thought it would be a good idea to just collate them all into a quick video. Sometimes the best advice and the best information is that which is given simply and concisely. So I hope this video is going to be concise. But yeah, and I said I received a question on Instagram. So yeah, uh, follow me on that as well. So, okay. So the first question is by um, Marie, Marie, Mary. Okay, I don't know which version it is. But anyway, they ask about applying for graduate entry at St. George's and they ask, do they accept a lot of graduate students or no? Also, as long as I meet their GAMSAT cutoff mark and have a 2-1 and have decent work experience around healthcare, would I have a chance of being accepted? What should I do to increase my chance of getting accepted? Thank you in advance. Okay, so quite a few things in there. Uh, the main thing I would say in terms of applying for graduate entry, it's useful not to think about the competition and the numbers too much. Uh, so you do hear about uh, competition being like, oh, there's this many applicants for one place or there's 50 applicants and there is 10 places or there's 100 applicants in 10 places. So to be honest, I don't think it's that useful to think about it in that way and think about those statistics because um, because it doesn't really make a difference to the way that you're going to act, to the way that you plan, however the competition is. It, like just because there's 50 people to 10 places doesn't mean that you're going to work less for it. And just because there's 100 people applying uh, to 10 places, it doesn't change anything too much. Uh, so don't think about that too much and just work on trying to prepare your application as best as you can, which is actually what you asked about. So in terms of the graduate entry application, um, it's really in two phases. So the first phase is actually getting the interview and the second phase is uh, getting the offer after the interview. So in order to actually get an interview, the on the majority of cases, it's based on the uh, aptitude test that you do or the entry test that you do. So either the GAMSAT, which is the graduate entry um, exam, or the, U or the UK CAT, uh, or the BMAT. And what you need to make sure that you do is actually like try really hard to smash those because as long as you meet a specific cutoff then for sure you'll probably get an interview um, and that's how they give out interviews for graduate entry um, so for example at George's they have a specific cutoff I don't know it's like 55 or 52 it varies and as long as you meet that cutoff you'll probably get an interview for graduate entry at other unis I think at King's and other ones as long as you hit a specific decile like at Queen Mary I think if you hit third decile so top 30% uh, then for sure you'll get an interview too. Um, so yeah, you just need to make sure you smash those aptitude tests. Once you've got the interview, then you need to work really hard to um, try your best to prepare. Um, and it's all about how you articulate your desire to study medicine, how you articulate your work experience, how you articulate your understanding of what it, uh, what being a medical student uh, entails. Um, so yeah, those are all things that you can prepare for uh, and obviously if it doesn't work out then you can always reapply. Like had I not got in then I would have probably applied five, six, seven, whatever, however many times it takes. The main thing is that you need to make sure you get the 2-1. If you don't get the 2-1 then it's a bit sticky. So um, yeah, that is the main thing. As long as you've got the 2-1 then everything else can be tried again. You can always do the UK CAT again. You can always do the GAMSA again. You can always apply again. If you don't get it to 2-1, then uh, yeah, I don't really know what to say at that stage. The next question is about being a medical student and this is asked by, uh, oh, okay, another, okay, Mary Tay. Um, and she asks, um, how are you examined at medical school, uh, OSCEs? Is it monthly and written exams? Um, so it, it, yeah, okay, so it, it really depends on which medical school you're at. Uh, I think in the majority of cases, you are examined through OSCEs and through written exams. So OSCEs are almost like multi-minute interviews, right? Um, so in, uh, when you do an interview in order to get into medicine where you do an MMI, you go into different cubicles and you'll be asked a different question. Similarly, when you're in medical school and you have an OSCE, then you might have 10 to 12 stations 
uh, and each time you go into a different station, you will have a patient or an actor who uh, will act a, a specific condition or they'll complain of a specific symptom. So I might go into one specific cubicle and they'll be like, oh, I've really got this, uh, I've got this really bad chest pain. Uh, and then you need to take a history from them and come up with a plan to treat the patient and manage them. You might go into another cubicle where they ask you to do an examination of the heart and the lungs, then you need to do that exam in a really slick way. Uh, and then you might go into another cubicle where uh, they test your communication skills. So you might get a little brief that says, okay, uh, this patient has just been diagnosed with so-and-so, so you need to be able to break those bad news um, in the best way possible. So that's an OSCE. Uh, then you might have written exams and those are like any other written exams. You might have short answer questions, multiple choice. And then, I'm not sure if other unis have this, but uh, there's something called an OSB, and that's an exam to test people's anatomy knowledge. So we go into the dissection room and you'll have different pro sections everywhere and a pin that is stuck on a specific structure of the body. It might be uh, like the bicep muscles or the shoulder or a specific nerve. And and then it's, it'll be like a multiple choice question uh, and it names a, a number of different nerves and then you just need to take the right one. So that's an OSPI. Uh, in terms of how often it happens, it varies. At my uni anyway, we in first and second year you have written twice a year and then OSCE once a year. Um, uh, at other places, they, I think they have OSCEs twice a year, even three times a year. But it depends. I don't think it happens like weekly or monthly. That's a bit deep. Like, I don't know if anyone can hack that still. Uh, yeah, okay. So that is... I hope that answered the question. Next question uh, is by someone called Anas H. Shout out, you got the same name as me. Uh, sick guy. Uh, how hard is medicine? How exactly big is the jump? from A levels to medicine, the jump is huge. It's mad. No, okay, it's not that deep. Yeah, so the jump isn't that bad, actually. Um, I would say that in terms of uh, conceptually, it's not very difficult at all. In fact, I would say it's a bit easier. Um, I, found, I found medicine easier than A level chemistry, for example. Where the challenge lies is in the amount of content you have to do. Uh, and this is something I've mentioned previously, you have huge amounts of content uh, and that is something you need to train yourself to be able to take in in an efficient way. You don't want to be someone who spends every day in the library trying to learn stuff. At the same time, you want to uh, be someone who's uh, like taken in enough knowledge to become a good doctor. So yeah, you just need to develop different techniques and find out how you learn. Uh, the jump isn't that bad, it's just that you need to learn huge amounts of content. Every year, the amount of content increases. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I'm getting through this very quick still. Next question. Uh, this is a good question actually. So, uh, great video, thank you. Uh, and this is by uh, oh, Shay S. Uh, just wondering how confident do you have to be to succeed in medicine? Do you have to be naturally quite confident? Thank you, okay. Um, so it, it really depends. So this is, I'm not sure whether this is a con misconception that lies uh, around everywhere. So it really depends on what you mean by confident. So if you are taking the colloquial meaning where generally people say that someone's really confident if they're really extroverted, if they are someone who talks to lots of people, they get lots of energy from being around in big circles and etc. Um, then I don't think you need to be that person at all. Uh, you really don't need to be extroverted in order to be someone who does well in medicine. What I do think you need to be able to do, however, is to be able to communicate effectively with people. Um, and that goes in terms of your body language, that goes in terms of uh, your tone of voice, that goes with... My demo's there still. Oh yeah, so that goes in terms of um, your tone of voice, the kind of words you use, how you make the patient feel, especially when they're at a um, really vulnerable um, stage in their life. The other thing is maybe confidence in terms of being someone who believes in their own ability. They, I suppose that helps, um, yeah. So it does help to be confident about um, you feeling like you can do well. Um, that helps, but you don't have to be extroverted by no means at all. Sometimes the quiet people are more reflective and that helps in uh, being a good doctor too. So yeah. Next question. Okay, so let's get into the Instagram ones. So these two questions, so these two questions kind of go together. I would like to ask whether I'll be eligible to go through the transfer 
from graduating as a biomedical scientist to medicine due to my A levels as they are not science A levels. Okay, let's just take this first. Okay, so this person says that um, they're doing biomed, but they didn't do science A levels, uh, so can they uh, essentially go in through graduate entry? So I don't think this person is at Georgia, so they do probably mean graduate entry medicine. And yeah, so definitely um, the fact that you're doing a science degree nullifies the requirement of you having to do a science A level. Uh, and this is because uh, I suppose medical schools think that if you've done a science degree, you'll be more competent in the sciences and so yeah yeah you can definitely apply you can, I think uh, in fact I think you can pretty much apply everywhere um, I don't think you need to do a science A levels if you've done a science degree so yeah go for good luck with your application and the next person asks a similar question and they said yeah, I've recently graduated with a degree in English literature and history uh, and I'm interested in pursuing medicine however I have no science A levels and I was wondering is the con if the content will be too much for someone with my background. Uh, number one, just make sure you check the requirements of the different unis and whether they require you to have at least science A levels or at least a, um, a science degree. There are definitely unis in the UK that uh, take you on even if you've never done science at all uh, and specifically one of them is George's. Okay, and if it will be too hard, uh, I... Okay, so I can't really relate because I've always kind of done sciences, uh, but there are lots of people in my year who have come from lots of different backgrounds, from politics to journalism to marketing and media and advertising to management consultancy, uh, and these people are often the people that excel in our year. Um, so what that kind of shows is, it's not really too much about how much you've done before, and uh, more to do with the mindset and how hard you work in your own time. Uh, so for sure it won't be an easy journey, I don't think, uh, but it just means that you probably will need to put a lot more hours in uh, than your undergraduate peers. I think I was gonna skip this question, but this is actually quite important, uh, and I think it will be useful to lots of people. So let's read this out. So what they say is, I'm a year 13 student uh, studying my A-levels in biology, chemistry, and psychology. I wanted to ask if you knew anything about the SGULs or St. George's clearing as I really don't think I'm going to get any offers for medicine this year. I'm predicted a star AA and inshallah I get this but my UK can be mad. Uh, went so bad. I want to apply for clearing. If I don't get any offers, but I do get the grades, would I be able to get through clearing? Uh, many thanks. I love your videos. They're so informative and interesting. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked the videos. Okay, so this is something I think will be a lot very useful, uh, and uh, it's about the clearing process. So lots of unis. So I don't have a list of. I don't have a mental list of them right now. But lots of unis in the UK allow you to do clearing as long as you've made the grades, like three A's minimum. What I suggest you do then is, obviously you've tried to do the UK CAT this year, uh, and either you banged it or it didn't go so well, uh, and in either case it doesn't really matter because if it didn't go well, then clearing happens during results day, which is August like 17th or 15th or whatever, and you finish your exams in June, so you have three, four weeks to study for the UK CAT, do it again, and then you can use that new UK CAT in order to go through clearing. I hope that makes sense. It's a really important part. Uh, replay that point if you need to. Do the UK CAT again. And if you've already done the UK CAT or the BMAT and I think even the GAMSA, uh, but specifically the UK CAT, if you've already done it and you've done really well with it, then I think you can just use that UK CAT in order to apply for clearing at all of these different places. George's, St. George's does clearing, I think Lancaster does clearing, and then some other unis. Make sure you check out exactly which ones there are and make sure you get the grade because you can't do those exams again. Other things you can do, you can reapply again, you can do the UK CAT again, uh, alternatively you can do Biomed, but then that will be the last chance again, so you need to smash Biomed out, but it gets complex, just do well the first time. Okay, I hope that video helped. It was not scripted. Uh, I literally just freestyled this whole thing. So, and plus I've got a bit of a cough, so I don't know if you can hear that through the microphone. Uh, but I'm committed to videos every Thursday at 6 p.m. and that's happened for the last what five six weeks so let's keep that going if you like the video then like the video 
as you can see I answered some questions I might make this into a series so DM me any questions that you have comment them below in the YouTube section enjoy your rest of the week and the weekend safe